Welcome one and all to Giant Bomb's number one internet literacy show, The Very Online Show. This is the show in which two extremely online and attractive, Lucy's written here, people... Oh, okay, well don't call uh, me out. ...that are so plugged into the bloody matrix that they're not even sure what's real anymore, talk about stuff happening on the internet. Why do we do this, you might ask? Well, it's to explain to our other attractive friend, Jeff Bacalar, what the hell is going on with the internet. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing great and feeling attractive, so thank you very much. Yeah, you, you're always feeling and looking attractive. That's good. Oh. Depending on your perspective, this show is either Jeff, attractive Jeff, voluntarily rotting his attractive brain for your entertainment so that he can be a little more in the know, or it's Lucy and I doing our best to take all that garbage that we constantly just cram into our brains and use it for some sort of good, namely educating Jeff and by extension you. Um, this is, as previously alluded to, today's episode is a Lucy James production. A Lucy James joint. So, Lucy, what have you got cooking for Jeff's attractive brain? <laughs> uh, Jeff, mm. what is your internet white whale? Like something you remember seeing on the internet from back in the day that you've just like never found again, or a game you might have played, or a picture or a video that you watched and saw. That one porno that you've been desperately trying to find again. Um, there is a subreddit for that. Pinball Poontang. <laughs> <laughs> what, what piece of pinball porn did I come across? <laughs> no. Um, it's called I, Tip of My Penis. It's the subreddit. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Don't go there. Don't at work. Self, never do, sub. Do no. that at home. <laughs> to r slash tip. Uh, that's a really good question, but simultaneously a difficult one to answer. Um, I do think there was a lot of things that I stumbled upon in college. Using stumble upon. Which we forget about all the time. Oh, I try good. and not let uh, the memory of stumble upon fizzle out, but that was very much a thing. What kind of a psychotic tool was that? To just like hit the random <laughs> generator button on the internet. I think it still exists. Um, yeah, it I must, think it does. It must. It must. Um, what? It, yeah, I don't. You know, maybe maybe it'll come to me the more I think about it during this episode. But I I do feel like I while well, stumbled upon moved to mix. And then someone from Mix had chimed in. Yeah, and someone from Mix appeared. You know, without getting too specific, which, you know, is probably what you were really after. I definitely remember in college coming across a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that felt nefarious, but more, um, there was more of like a thrill of it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that was the time where like crime on the internet was not that it's not pervasive now, but like there used to be a time where crime was very much legal on the internet and it's now it's like frowned upon. It's still okay to do, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll try and think of something super specific, okay. but like, I, 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 let me turn the tables and ask you both if you, if you would indulge me and maybe that'll trigger some sort of memory re uh, receptor. I think there's a bunch of flash games. I remember playing when I was a kid mm. that will never exist anymore. Okay. Yes. Um, there was one where you were like a little, um, oh, what was it? It was on mini clip. I think it began with a Z and you were like, oh, I don't remember. You're bringing back all like the yeah. sleigh riding things to yeah. me. I mean, although that's still around. Just like stuff like from er my early years on the internet. Like, um, yeah. oh, what was that game where this one must still exist. You basically had like two players and you would fire arrows at each other and try and hit each other like that kind of, like that kind of stuff. Um, I remember something. Oh, See, this is why I asked you. Uh -huh. It was called Out of Order. Mm -hmm. It was a word game mm -hmm. where you just like got on and and they made it so that you would like earn points and you could like buy stuff with the points. I don't know if it's still around. I haven't really looked for it in a while, but that was a thing I remember. Hmm. Triple O out of order. I'm sure. It, I'm sure. It's Braingle dot com. I don't like that. Oh no. Um. But anyway, it's a board game now. Boxer Jam. Wow. Okay. Oh wow. I d yeah, I can't think of anything specific for me. Um, this was it. 
AOL. Uh, oh, there it is. Yep. That the, the that next screen. Yep. That remember. Yep. That mm. that makes me remember. Yep. That's the one. Oh, shit. Look at this guy. Oh, look at him. Grand Central. Very impressive. I don't think there's anything that I would try and find. Like, I didn't play a lot of online, like, Flash games. I played mm. a couple. Like, I played, like, the pool game on Mini Clip and, mm -hmm. and a few of those, um, like... It's nude. Yeah, nude pool. Um, Nanaka Crash, which I think is still very, very available, mm. which is a very okay. weird game. Um, where you're just this dude who just has been hit by a bike and is soaring through the sky and you just have to keep him going for oh. as long as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I remember that one. It's great. Um, I don't know, it's, it's based on like some weird aero gear thing, but whatever. Mm. Um, but otherwise, I think I think like, I don't think I've got a white whale. This mm. the, Actually, I do have a one white whale, which I've never been able to find. There was a very specific key gen for Sony Vegas, if you were pirating, if you're doing illegal crimes, which I never did, of course. This is something that I, I, I can see. You, you read about yeah, in an academic I heard, journal. I heard about, yeah. But one of the key gens that, uh, that uh, you could use to pirate Sony Vegas had... Key gens are universally have just straight bangers when you when you like when you open them, like they've the got music? some music is just banging. There was one that like constantly stuck got stuck in my head, and then years later I remembered it and I was like, I need to hear it, I need to hear it. And I just could not find it anywhere. Um I found a lot of other ones which were really good, but um I didn't find that specific one. Mm. Um I have tried a few times and I just cannot see it. Well, maybe one day you'll find it. But anyway, mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna uh, get onto the crux of the uh, of the conversation is because um, they say the internet is forever. They do, and I'm here to tell you that it's not really at what? all. What they lied? They wait a minute. Capital T. Wait a minute. What? I thought everything is on the internet forever and ever and ever. It's not. No, it's not at all. So the way I, uh, I kind of got onto this topic because um, the other day Nintendo like deleted this strategy guide that you can only get online and like the, because people put scans of it on and pe Nintendo gonna Nintendo. But also there was this other game. It was like some, I think it was like a Japanese episodic game or like a some kind of fanfic, basically like romantic stories and it had this little community and then the game was just like, we're just gonna shut down and delete everything. Um, and it got, and it just got me thinking about is is it possible to like is is everything gonna live on the internet forever? And my kind of thesis, my hypothesis of like why people say everything's on the internet is because of the way the internet has changed, particularly with the rise of social media. So social media, if you think about the the halcyon days, was basically started off as a way to connect with people that you know. Then it was kind of branching out to connect with people overseas, all around the world. And then people very quickly learned how to use that to build a big group of friends, which then became like building an audience, which then became building a brand. And it became very easy to become famous for nothing. And I don't mean that disparagingly, like the three of us have big audiences, like compared to a lot of people in the for world. For nothing. And for, and we're shit. No, but it's like, you know, that's our social currency now. It's not based on what celebrity was in like the 90s. You know, none of us are Academy Award winners. None of us have um, discovered the cure for disease. Like it's not accomplishment based. It is- like I have never been close enough to Chris Rock to slap him. <laughs> Would you slap him? No, you know? probably not, no. Oh, good, no. Yeah, probably not. Don't, yeah. don't do no. slaps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just don't do, don't I have, do slaps. A, I have a no slaps policy unless you really deserve it. I mean, everyone knows that about Tam. Yeah, yeah of course. Slap I don't slap. I only fist. All right. <laughs> don't slap, you bang. Yeah, yeah. of course. Um, but anyway, like, so yeah, people think you are worth following if you already have a lot of followers or if you have like a blue tick. And like, that's become, uh, that's become why that's become an, a, a marker of fame nowadays. And um, we find ourselves in this place where people are gonna do anything to grow, not everyone, this is obviously a generalization, but a lot of people online, if you have been online, you'll notice that they will do a lot of stuff that 10 years ago we would have considered uncouth. Um, and that usually involves taking jabs at other people. 
it, whether it's punching up, um, what's the harm, right? You, this is kind of why I believe screenshot culture, and that's and that's what I'm calling it. I'm not deliberate. I'm deliberately not calling it cancel culture. I'm calling it screenshot culture um, because there are blogs like Your Fave is problematic. Um, people keep diaries and tumblers of the actions of people online, and like it's it's the receipt culture. Yeah. And then there's also the culture of being the Twitter main character where everyone gets the feeling of moral superiority um, dunking on someone who's made a mistake. Like, mm -hmm. And then that's fueled by provocative headlines, hate clicks. And this is why people say the internet is forever, right? Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, understood. Good, well, I'm going to write my academic thesis and, and I will quote the two of you. Um, but anyway, I'm here to tell you that it's not forever. And websites can close down, and sometimes that's for the best. Like, Jeff, Tam, do you have anything that you are glad has been lost to time on the internet? Oh, yeah, sure 100%. I used to, on Facebook, I, know what I did. Is. <laughs> on Facebook, I did a multi part uh, exploration of the idea that uh, Princess Diana was killed by uh, the royal family <laughs> because she. Uh, uh, was impregnated with the child of Dodi Al Fayed. Uh, <laughs> like, Whoa! I explored it from many different angles, and then many years later, I was like, I should delete that because. And you were just like publishing your findings. Remember notes on Facebook? I was just publishing the various. This I was. I still am very into conspiracy culture, like and and like conspiracy theories. So it wasn't me saying. This is what happened. It was me saying, "This is what people think. This is what other people oh, think." And it was like, it. But it, but it read like a the writings of a lunatic, like <laughs> because back then people weren't into as as into like, or they weren't as aware of like conspiracy theories and that kind right. of stuff. I like that was one of my main things on the internet, like. I, I did the same around 9-11. I did the same no. around 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, like, it, it was what? like an academic look at what people on the internet believe. Oh, you were covering it. Yeah, for myself. It was, like, for it, was my, it was like, people are like thinking this happened. Other people are thinking this happened. Got and this it. is the kind of thing that became like true crime podcasts or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you're a culture but reporter. I, I was yeah. doing that, yeah. And um, yeah. but then, like, if you read it, it just looks like back then people didn't have the context for people like this stuff, or people might be interested in stuff. So people were probably reading it and being like, "This person believes that um, there was, you know, this X Y Z happened." Yeah, you know, so you're so ahead of your time, Tam. Yeah, and I was like, "Nah, I'm applying for jobs. I should probably delete that stuff." And also, uh, the the US definitely has me on some sort of list, so I should delete all this. Stuff. There. There was, um, I mean, I, I got rid of my Facebook a couple years ago, but I'm, I also assume that like that shit is still out there. Oh yeah. I mean, call, almost call that a conspiracy, like, like almost certainly somewhere every post I ever made is on a hard drive that is not mine. Here's, here's how early I was. I was writing about Alex Jones before anyone knew who Alex Jones was. You no son of a, so well, no thanks word. for help. Thanks for helping. Thanks for helping uh, <laughs> that guy. I was the there, yeah, I was there like looking at being like, this dude thinks he's stumbled upon a ritualistic uh, act in oh like God, uh, all these, like he, when he was infiltrating um, Bohemian Grove, I was there like just writing about it and stuff like that. Years later, all of this would come out and be like, look what you've done. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I am I mean, a psycho enabler, Hussein. How are you, buddy? <laughs> so when I mean, I had like my old MySpace stuff, and I had like a little website oh, that I, shit. yeah, like that's all gone. And yeah. yeah, it's embarrassing, but I I am the type of person who like I still have a Facebook account, and when it says "Look at your memories from twelve years ago today," I would always click on it because I just like that kind of stuff. Um, sure. Is listening to Nine Inch Nails. Nine Inch Nails. No, there yeah. was some of it. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. No, no, no. There was one that I had to delete. <laughs> I was talking about chemtrails. Oh no! Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh no! Wait. I, all only, of a sudden, it was only because what? chemtrails was a Beck song, but like out of context, it looked okay. like I believed in chemtrails. <laughs> I'm very uncomfortable with where this has gone. Listen, I. Uh, I worked for a startup in the late 90s. If you're about to say you worked on Agent Orange, I'm going to be very upset. Nope. Nope. Could not be anything further. Uh, I, yeah, I worked for a startup where there's definitely a ton of video 
of me, like interviewing people and just doing a lot of on camera shenanigans. Nothing like mm. nothing untoward, but definitely like just not just more embarrassing than than like shitty, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I all, this, all the stuff I used to like when I first started out in the industry, like the blog that I wrote for is all gone. Um, the, like the domain was never renewed and then someone like squatted on Tam, you worked for CVG. Oh, what yes, happened to I that? Worked to, I worked many years at a place called computerandvideogames.com, one of the most well-known, one of the first video game magazines, the online component of one of the first video game magazines of all time. And this is like where I was on my come up, where I was my most thirstiest to be in the industry. Yeah. I wrote all kinds of features. I was right, I was banging out features every single day, like amazing features. Because that was my whole thing. I was like head of features for a little while. And I was just writing these passionate pieces and doing like investigative stuff and that all the stuff that when I say you know you get people in the industry who are like I don't call myself a journalist and then other people are like oh yeah I call myself a journalist um and you get like I at that phase that was where I earned the time the term journalist like I did some shit back then um and uh that they eventually laid us all off um and they absorbed they said they were going to absorb all of uh the staff and the content into games radar and then they did that, and every single one of my pieces redirected to just some random numbered list feature. Yeah. Like oh, wow. it was like ten things you didn't know about Tetris, and it, when the link, when you clicked the link, it was probably um, the life and times of Yoji Shinkawa or something like that. Like something that I spent days and days and days on, and like all of my work from there is gone. Yeah. It doesn't exist anymore. Aww. Yeah, and so that's you know. When when websites close down, we lose a bit of ourselves, particularly the people who work there. But it's not even just like when whole websites get closed down, like when features get sunsetted, it means that we lose something that, you know, marked a very special era in, in like something like YouTube. So I want to talk briefly just about like annotations back when, you know, when was this? Truth or fail? Uh... When was this? 2009. So at that wow. time, this guy, Charlie so cool, like would have been one of the biggest YouTubers in the world. And one of the big things on YouTube at the time was this, Truth or Fail, um, where it was like an interactive quiz show and you would use YouTube annotations. And so like at this point, Charlie is like going, you know, point on the one that you think and it was and you could do and you could follow it and you could do a whole quiz and it would just point you in the right direction. YouTube got rid of annotations. So there was stuff like this that just became unusable. Hmm. People made choose your own adventure videos. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, some of them have gone back and put like title cards in um, to try and fix it. But like, yeah, it, it sucks. And um, hmm. it turns out annotations didn't work on mobile which is why they were canned. And then the other one I'll talk about here briefly is MySpace. <laughs> wow. uh, so okay. MySpace was the most visited website in the US in 2007 uh, until Facebook had their meteoric rise. Um, it was the most popular social network for a number of years. It was sold to News Corp in 2011. And then in 2013, uh, they accidentally wiped 10 years of blogs, comments, and private messages. Um, so all that was gone. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably for the best. Like, probably. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, but then in 2019, they had a server migration, uh, which meant that every photo, video, and audio file uploaded before 2016 was gone. And there go all my mixtapes. They lost everything? How does that happen? A server migration error. Um, I, I, that? I was watching, I was reading this, I think this is the, oh, there was a Mashable article and they were talking about this and they found that like some people were going, oh, my son died, but he uploaded songs to oh. MySpace and I can't ever listen to them again. And so, you know, we, we think, oh, we just lose the embarrassing shit, but then there's people who you know, had social network accounts that might not still be with us. And so, you know, you kind of lose mm, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Totally. And so it's very sad. And so the other one I want to briefly talk about before we move on is GeoCities. Because oh, in, the, shit. in the grand scheme of things, like 
Um, we've been talking about things that have been very recent. GeoCities was... Jeff, did you have a, did you ever have a GeoCities? Many. Oh, many, many, what did many. you have? Uh, like, I definitely had some kind of, like, wrestling, uh, like, hotline sort of thing there. Hotline? I had, hotline? Yeah, like, not like a hotline, but just, like, posting, like, wrestling rumors. Because that was huge in, in, like, the late 90s, uh, early 2000s. Like, there were all of these wrestling hotlines that you would call up mm -hmm. and then uh from that grew the popularity of like i'm just gonna put these rumors on a website do you remember what your geocities was called no hmm. or do you just not want to tell us and if i did i'm not gonna cool. there tell it is. you guys no uh i don't I i'm gonna google don't. jeff Bacala. yeah go for it geocities yeah. Well, so GeoCities, if you're unaware, um, if you're watching along at home, it was a web... Oh, I found it! <laughs> Shut up! No, no you did not. did not. <laughs> no, I did not find it. <laughs> yeah, you're a fucking liar, dude. <laughs> well. Uh... <laughs> God damn. I found I it! Found it! <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> this is genuinely a look of terror. What an actual <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I was just, just like, what is going on? Just go on, Jeff. Just go I found it! No, you did not. <laughs> I was like, no, it wasn't that bad, but I was not happy. <laughs> well, I wasn't happy because it was like, oh gosh, I have no idea what's about to hit me. And number two, uh, you know, it's not like we're doing this live, but still. Mm. You watch your ass, Tim. <laughs> you watch your ass. GeoCities was a web hosting service, and like back in the day, uh, most web hosting services would charge, but GeoCities was free. Uh, you had a size, li you had like a space limit of like two megabytes or something ridiculous, and you would pay if you went over that. But basically, you could make your own website. It was usually filled with garish GIFs, animated oh backgrounds, um, under construction signs, and you know, it, it could be about anything. Mm. And it was free. And it had. Uh, it was made in 1994, uh, sold to Yahoo in 1999, and it had like at least 38 million pages, and then Yahoo closed it down in 2009. If you want to watch a really, really great video about it, this video by Quartz, which mm -hmm. is a brand I've never actually heard of, but they yeah. do a deep dive into kind of preservation, um, specifically on <laughs> GeoCities. Sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. Is that Goatsy? <laughs> yeah, is that Goatsy? And who is that? Um, yeah, this is this is like all it was though. It's such yeah. a perfect. Like, it's, oh my god, what a perfect fucking. I'm sorry. Uh, slice of it. Can we go back to the divorced dad's page? I, you know what I would do? Sign oh my shit! All this book. stuff's coming back to me. I would. It was really cool. <laughs> it was really cool <laughs> to uh, get like like wave files of like movie quotes mm. like i had all these like billy madison and like tommy boy fucking uh, like uh, you know like sound files yeah and i would like i would like organize them and, and put them on the internet um this yeah you? that's what it was like this yeah this totally that's what it was like it was it was everyone was like how do we what what's the thing we can get on here yeah and we mm. just did it well, I mean, so <laughs> terrible. They they definitely had an aesthetic, and um, yeah. basically, when it was closed down, um, and yeah, definitely shout out to this video from Quartz, which we'll make sure to link. Um, people rallied together, like this group of archivists were like, "We're not going to lose all this stuff." So they sent crawlers, um, which is basically like a kind of program that goes in and tries to archive websites um into GeoCities to try and rescue as much as possible it's like pac-man but with websites exactly. and the little dots are GeoCities. yeah exactly so uh it's called the GeoCities project um <laughs> and i'm sorry we'll read this in a second because it really makes me laugh because there's a real penis to it um <laughs> so GeoCities project upon the news of the closing of GeoCities, the no, you gotta read it with the petty voice oh yeah don't worry don't yeah. worry we'll get to, we'll get to the petty it's this okay. bit which tam okay. actually i'll make i might make you read it okay I'll, I'll um, but basically ready. uh they were told <laughs> in april 2009 that it was closing in october so they spent the whole summer uh crawling through GeoCities to add it to the wayback machine um 
And um, so there's the archive team who are doing it and archive.org who are doing it, but basically a, a whole massive team of archivists came together to try and save as much as possible. They managed to save about 16,000 websites, um, which is about one terabyte's worth. And I just want Tam to read this. <laughs> okay. Here we go. It cannot be stressed enough how many people were involved in this project. Some preferred to be behind the scenes, while Jason Scott continued his habit of being complete a complete media hog, getting a lot of interviews and FaceTime with people asking what was up. But there were dozens of people involved, and they supplied weeks of time and effort to find efficient ways to download all of this data before it was moved. Yeah. Jason Scott actually runs archive team. So I don't know why people like I don't know why that little I think uh, I interviewed him once. Really? Yeah. It's fucking On, like, media a hog. Four. Media hog. But anyway, so they managed to gather some stuff. Um and all of that data was later then released as a torrent file. And some of the archivists that are interviewed in that courts video set up a Tumblr page that just it's automated and it just posts from that to that torrent. So it's called One Terabyte of Kilobyte Age, the GeoCities research blog. And it just, like, I I was doing, oh. I was writing this up yesterday and I lost like an hour just to this. <laughs> this is this is like an art exhibit. Like, yeah. Oh, well, uh, it has been an art exhibit. Yeah. Um, like, hello. A Xena this fan is, page. <laughs> but like, this is super, so... As as hilarious as it is, it's this. We can all agree, like this is important. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. A lot of German stuff at the minute. Um, mm, a lot of dead images. Let me. Tell a lot, you. and then that's part of the thing, right? It's like all these dead links are just super sad, and. Well, that's the funny thing about GeoCities is like even when you did the right thing. It was very easy to have an image mm -hmm. not show up. Yeah, just because of like I don't know. Dusty pipes, rusty pipes. <laughs> I have yeah. no idea. Just, I'm sorry, geocities.com slash nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like, didn't they use like the tilde for a while also instead of just like yeah. slash username? Swinton? Oh. <clears throat> yes, her. Exactly her. Look Not at the this. squiggly what? line. Come Dude, on. the best. Oh, go back up one. The best was like borders around clickable images. Yeah. Look at like this. a blue border around a clickable image. Fuck. Oh yeah, bring that back. Yeah, bring that back. That had a really professional aesthetic. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, Area fifty one slash nebula. Oh my god. Wait, see, see, Lucy. This is what I was talking about at the top of the show. Okay, this is this might come off a little. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? A little sort of like tasteless in a way. Hmm. But uh, I was on the internet a lot. When uh, that Heaven's Gate shit was going on, yeah, cool. okay, and my buddy and me were on the internet one night, and we like dove super deep into their website. Oh my god! Which I think is still archived and around. It somewhere. will, it will be archived somewhere. Like, and we, and we like, and this was after that incident happened, and we were like very, we were, we, it was more of just like kids, uh, you know, walking through, uh, you know, like a haunted house kind of thing, mm -hmm. but anyway, that, See, that that's one, what I like, loved, that's what I yeah, loved. I know, that cosmic background tr uh, triggered that memory, for yeah. sure. Marshall Applewhite. God, mm. some, I, I could just, I could just scroll this for hours. This is um, so good. But anyway, so that's uh, one terabyte of kilobyteage.tumblr.com. But like, the old internet is important, not just because it's full of memories, pictures, mm. messages, um, which is a reference. Uh, Jess will send that you. That was a reference. We'll send you the, the video. <laughs> to <for> Lethal Bizzle. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's because it's a part of our history. It is a, it's yeah. a, like, most importantly, it's a record of the web changing from one phase where it was mostly used by academics to becoming something that was owned by everyone. Like anyone could have a GeoCities website. Anyone could make a website about anything. And it was empowering and people, mo like way more people could access it and use it. And that is why internet preservation is important. And no one knows that better than Brewster Carley, not oh. the merchant from Elden Ring. 
Yeah, I was going to say, he's my favorite from floor. software character. <laughs> um, he, you might know him as the guy who invented the Alexa ranking, but at the same time, back in 1996, he founded the Internet Archive and implemented later, a few years later, the Wayback Machine, um, which we'll talk about in a second, and the Internet Archive's motto, um, and they are here in San Francisco, apparently they're up in the Presidio, um, is... Um, and apparently, if you look at their building, it's, it looks like a kind of Greek temple. Um, and their motto is universal access to all knowledge. Uh, so, Tam, if you want to read this quote from the New Yorker. When Kale started the Internet Archive in 1996 in his attic, he gave everyone working with him a book called The Vanished Library about the burning of the Library of Alexandria. The idea is to build the Library of Alexandria to Electric Boogaloo. He told me, <laughs> he told me, the uh, Hellenism goes further. There's Hellenism. What is that? Yeah, what is that? The Hellenism goes further. There's a partial backup of the Internet Archive in Alexandria, <laughs> Egypt. Oh, wow. How perfect. Damn. Yeah. So, so this guy, and we have another quote from him later on, but uh, he founded this team um, of archivists to come together. But the Internet is so big that it's like, how do you decide what? to archive and like what to save. Um, I did read that I think the average age of a website, of a web page, sorry, is about 90 days before it is. And I, I would argue even less so with SEO changes. You, Tam, you have your hand raised? Yes, Tam, yes. Hellenism, the national character or culture of Greece, especially ancient Greece, or the study or imitation of ancient Greek culture. Oh, oh. Okay. yeah. Okay. I mean, they, yeah, they, there's a lot of Greek in um, in, in the, the Internet Archive mm -hmm. um, symbolism stuff, so that makes sense. So the New Yorker article is is really good, and like it mentions like Russia and Ukraine here. So I I just want to say that like this is a part of world history, and this is the example that's cited in this 2015 article. But basically, there was a Russian social media site that had been previously identified by the Internet Archive as being um, worthy of like getting constant updates and like constant captures and the way that they did that uh, actually meant that like someone after they shut down Malaysian Airlines flight 17 back in 2014 they posted on their social media site we just shut down a plane yeah. and then two hours later they deleted it but it had already been captured mm. and so it's like internet preservation is incredibly important in for a number of way, uh, reasons but um, that, that begs the question like how do they decide what to capture um, well, they have three main strategies that the archivists employ. Because um, actually, there's a quite funny thing where in the UK, there's a law in the UK that basically everything that gets published in a UK website has to get uploaded to the British Library. But the archivists at the British Library were complaining about that because they're just like, yeah, we got all this bullshit, all these blogs, people talk about their personal feelings. That's not noteworthy at all. Yeah. However, uh, it could be in some upsetting cases i guess but like so the archivists start by considering the entirety of the web and seeking the most important fraction and they capture a shallow outline of the entire internet uh basically every single url and associated homepage that's wow. accessible and then dive deep into as many pages as possible for the top five million or so visited websites See, but yeah, and I was then just gonna say, like, get a flat bird's eye view of the internet. So that's like step one. Yeah. Then they seek other signals of importance, like news aggregators, to the entirety of a national domain. Um, and when there's an important event, even every YouTube URL ever shared on Twitter, because they can't capture all the video, but they can capture like the URLs of stuff and like figure out if it's important because it's being shared via social networks. And then they can figure out which videos are important to share. So like back mm. in the UK, the Tories um, had all of these speeches that they put on their website and then they deleted them all. And so like it was stuff about David Cameron just lying to constituents because Kel Surprise. Um, and then they just deleted them all and there was no real archive of it. Um, mm. But it was shared a lot. And mm. now the British people are like, no, we have to upload everything. Um, and then finally, the other institutions can use the internet archive easily. So there are ways um, to for other people to create like specialized collections. And we'll look into that in a bit. 
Um, and then all of these collections are then copied back into the Wayback Machine. So that's the publicly accessible version of it. Um, and so basically it can be a giant team effort. However, there is still so much more to the internet that is not being archived. Mm. The Library of Congress is also getting in on the web capturing um, game. However, their efforts are a bit all over the shop because they ask for approval. So they don't, um, like, because they want to archive things like uh, politician websites. They want to do that, but they can't do it easily. Like the, the, the web archive just asks for forgiveness later. Yeah. They just do it. Whereas the Library of Congress is like, uh, excuse me, can we please archive your website? And, you know, it takes time. That's exactly how they sound as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, are you going to, do you have more here about like how this gets better or are you just sort of, because I just feel like the problem with all of this is that backing up the internet was not built mm. with the internet. Yes. Right. So like presumably the way, you know, you have like a raid server operate where it's like constantly doing this sort of backup regardless of what happens. Mm. It's probably how they would have to program something. Well, right? that's the like, thing. So I talked a little bit about um, the crawlers that they send into websites to archive. Right. Um, websites can opt out by putting, I think it's like a text file. It's called like robots.txt. And if they upload that onto the server anywhere, the web archive will see it and just like back off and just won't yeah, archive like, it. Yeah, like, oh, hey. Oh, just okay. like, oh, okay. Oh, um, oh, sorry. The Library of Congress was going to archive all of Twitter <laughs> this was like a big thing from a few years ago. Like That's funny. Twitter agreed to give their backup and their archive to the Library of Congress. And then in like 2017, they were like, nah, this isn't worth it. Like we're not doing it. So they, they kind of stopped doing that. Um, mm. Currently the web archive sits at over 45 petabytes, petabytes, which is 4,500 terabytes. And the internet archive is double that because it's filled with like videos and music and software. Yeah. Um, however... There are well, hang on. We'll quickly we'll quickly have a look at the web archive because I have been having some fun just kind of going down this rabbit hole. This is a good website. This is such a good website. Can you just search for random items? Can you search for Pretty my? Much. Can yes. you search for my CVG article, "The Art of Yoji Shinkawa"? Um, Let's see I if will. it comes up. Let's have a look. The Art of Yoji Shinkawa. Is it there? Big money, big money. I mean, but you see what I mean? Like they no, have. This, oh, this is, is. This is. Wait, wait, wait. Um, is, do you know what year? Oh no, no. Um, text. Yeah, it's well, text. What's interesting is like, there's a ton of, um, there's like a ton of like albums and like videos mm -hmm. and like all mm. these interesting things that well, have just been put here for. You know, posterity. So I was this whole Grateful Dead um, thing. There's the magazine rack, yeah. old time radio, speed runs. We'll have a look yeah. at. But then there's also oh, <laughs> oh okay. Then there's also All just right. the hentai segment. Oh yeah, However, you gotta archive that. Why not? There was one that I'm trying to find that I looked at yesterday, and I thought it would be quite fun. Video game videos. Oh no. And then what? Look! What? All the cookbooks. That's cook crazy. Looks. Hey! Right, right next to Brazzers. There we go, baby. That's where yeah. we deserve to be. Holy shit! Look at this. All That's the cookbooks um, have been deemed worthy of preservation. However, then you go down. I don't know what that is. Oh, what? I don't know if it's a penis or not. It could have been a dick. But why is this in the same thing? Why is? I don't get it. I don't know. Well, this is a forum. How'd this get all mixed up? Well, I don't know. Wait, just, just gotta, scroll back. Someone's got plumbers don't wear ties from World of Long Plays. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. let's just Harry Potter games, the video archives. Don't know if we need that. Right. A little bit more, a little bit more curation, maybe. What is that? Um, is that Varvia, Lady half dressed? What's going on? This here? is my shit.net. <laughs> anyway, maybe not everything on the internet. Oh, God. R slash hentai contest entry. I'm just going to scroll us back up. <laughs> <laughs> here but, we go. Uh, but there are some cool, there are some cool things like speed runs. Yeah, that's neat. 
Um, then, you know, you've got all this stuff. Uh, just, I mean, you could lose so much of your life in here. Just maybe not in the hentai section. But um, what do you want to look for? Let's, hang on, let me just see. No, oh, why, why is it always got to be this? Oh my oh, god, there's a go. lot of this. Let's, let's go. Let's, we gotta click one of these. Jeff, these you get to pick. G4? Go. Oh my god, that's really that's a really long time. Okay, we gotta click that one the way Jeff's looking down at a tweet and looks very sad. Uh this one? Oh yeah. Okay. That one. Don't oh, buy this a video. It's not card. that long ago. It's 2018. Oh no, 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 Outside. No, we're not going outside. It's freaking sleeting. <laughs> you want outside? Here's outside. This heater on my butt's this, doing. This is only four that. years ago. Oh, oh, listen, let's go back something clubs. further. The, what? The G4 thing? Yeah, let's do the G4 thing. What's that all about? Oh, this is four by three. You know it's old. Oh! <gasps> oh! <laughs> Who's this Look baby? That. Look at that baby boy. Yo, this is. When was this? What year is this? What year is this? 2013? No, no, it's it can't be. It's gotta be before. I'm clean shaven. Shut up, Mark Bell. We wanna listen to Jeff. Yeah, we wanna listen to Jeff. Oh, if they ever go to Jeff, Holy Jesus shit. Christ. <gasps> there he is. <gasps> there he is. There he is. The feel of the iPod. But what I really want to know is, you know, you're talking about the Zune? The same <laughs> this guys is so like fucking Adams perfect. <laughs> And Xbox 360. Why can't I get my marketplace downloads synced up with my Zoom? What's Look going at on that hair! Right, yeah, Kate, is this uh, uh, this is a common gripe that I read on, on many message boards? Do you think the How come Xbox owners this would, would dude looks exactly the same? Yeah. Nice wow, Kate's bucks. fringe. Yeah, that, real low. That definitely interests me. You know, it's just. Zune kind of seems to be pimping Look at that fringe. There, you know, and wow. Yeah. The iPod Impressive. Need to do that. You know, right. the iTunes. Thanks for finding this because I actually. Uh, I actually was looking for something similar like this the other day. Either way. Let's talk about you, Zune. What a wonderful service the Internet Archive mm -hmm. provides. Anyway, so it's 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 fantastic. And uh but there was there was resistance to it. Ow, I just kicked my desk. Uh, there is resistance <laughs> to the Internet Archive. Um, for example, HarperCollins, the book publisher, is suing them because Big Book oh. doesn't like the internet? What a surprise. Because people are scanning <laughs> Big Paper against big it? Paper. What? <laughs> because people are scanning out of print books and putting them up on the Internet Archive. Yeah. Yes, um, good. Cry me a fucking river. Good. Get out of there, HarperCollins. Um, and then I hope I don't ever need I get a book deal with HarperCollins because <laughs> <laughs> the Internet Archive will screw me on this. Simon and Schuster or Penguin only, please. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, social media is like unarchiving friendly. Apparently, um, Zuck, Big Zuck in particular, is against. Um, there, there is that rule. Uh, what is it? The Section Two Thirty or something, where. Yeah. Uh, it's the, it's the, what is it? The platform holder is ir un not responsible for what people upload, which is kind of like the safety blanket for the Internet Archive. Because Of course, can... Zucker would have won that. So Zuck is like, <laughs> mm, don't like that. And also um, a lot of tech companies and music companies are trying to change uh, slash remove the general copyright fair use exceptions for libraries because the Internet Archive operates as a library which would make it harder for people to share things as well as limit what the Internet Archive can actually save. Um, so that's just domestic. And then you've got global issues. Um, so they did try for a while to have a global Internet Archive. However, um, there are differences in copyright laws. Um, and also, funnily enough, a lot of people just don't trust Silicon Valley to be in charge of all this shit. Um, then you have countries like Russia and China who actively try and block um, any, you know, they, they don't necessarily want their citizens reading stuff on the Western <laughs> internet. Um, mm. So mm. they don't want to be a part of it. And so you also have issues like, uh, so they, they're basically walled off, their internet is walled off from sort of the rest of the world. It's difficult to hack into and, and crawl. Um, there are also issues like what's happening in Ukraine right now. 
um, a bunch of archivists, archivists are rallying together to save Ukrainian websites because they are at risk of destruction or being uh, modified, um, obviously considering the war that's happening over mm-hmm. there right now. And it's like a bunch of people have very quickly got together to try and save a bunch of Ukrainian heritage um, online. Uh, it's called Sucho. So there's a lot there's a lot of stuff to to take into mm. consideration with regards to internet preservation. It's not just as simple. Um, and this is obviously a very a t- top glance. Um, but I think over the course of this episode, we talked about why internet preservation is important for a number mm-hmm. of reasons. But Tam, if you want to uh, send us a home with this mm. quote from <clears throat> Brewster. What we're able to do... Wait, no, do I need to... What we're able what's, to do what's now. The, what's, do I need, yeah, he's what's learned. The he's a librarian. Okay. He's also in okay. the Internet Hall of Fame. So. Okay. Oh, I can do oh, that. Is that good or bad? Okay. What we're able to do now is know about your individual history. We're able to get to the specificity of the historical record, which I think is going to really be engaging in 100 years' time. What would you give for a video of your great-grandmother it would just give you this ballast. It would give you what? It would give you an anchoring that we right now lack. We're living in the perpetual present, and that is dangerous. Makes He's that, that actually, he actually makes a good point, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How's makes my voice? Think. That was a great voice. Pretty good. Okay, yeah, cool. I liked it. It was good. a little Stephen Toast for me. Oh, for my taste. okay. I actually mm-hmm. really liked that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. then if you yourself want to archive things and honestly just take time to look at the, the Wayback Machine, it is fascinating. Go to- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop all my absolutely shite tweets in there. <laughs> nice. Uh, go to archive.org slash web. Hang on, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> yes, let's archive my shite let's tweets. Let's archive, archive, Tam, what is a shit tweet that you want? <laughs> Oh, you want me to archive? It's just there's so many. This there's, one, uh, do the Metal oh, Gear top one. one, baby. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay. So all you have to do: copy <laughs> link to the tweet, paste it. Oh, wait. That's just no, oh no, I, I, I put it in the wrong. Page. I put it in the wrong box. I put it in the wrong box. There you go. Save page. Bam. Bam. Save forever. There it is. Minted. No, minted. You just made an NFT, baby. Safe page. The gamers of the future will know not to chat to me. <laughs> Capture is estimated to start in 17 minutes. Let's go. So By the time you're reading right. this, my shit tweet will be part of internet history. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, archive.org. Internet Wonderful. preservation. It is important. I frequently will lament the fact that I can't access a lot of my work from previous mm. years because... There's days where I have to remind myself that I, I'm good at writing and I try to look back at the stuff that I've done in the past and I'm just like, no. Oh. What's crazy is that there's there's like weird nefarious reposting sites, mm. right? That'll like crawl legitimate media sites and republish mm-hmm. in, a, in a weird way. Oh, yeah. So like we, we just... I feel like the that shit is doing a better job yeah. of like you know preserving uh, what needs to be preserved. But yeah, it's weird. But that last quote is actually really um, you know sort of like insightful because yeah. it's true. Everything we we treat the internet in a very kind of disposable way with that sort mm. of stuff. And you're right. Like I don't rem- I don't remember shit from six years ago. Mm-hmm. It's why you know? I'm I'm. Occasionally, I'm thankful that there are people out there who are just like stealing my work and putting it elsewhere. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Definitely. Like, let's 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 put your his. Oh, oh okay. <gasps> Look at all this CVG off the record, though. No, oh, yeah, all my all the podcasts that we did. All are the podcasts there. are in there. Fetching more results. Midnight so- Resistance chat very good is there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My other podcast when we got uh, when CVG got shut down, they were like, "No, you can't do a podcast called CVG off the record anymore." I was like, "Well, I'm going to create one called Chat Very Good, which abbreviates <laughs> to CVG. Kiss my ass." <laughs> <laughs> and so- now, from the ashes of that, there is the video game website VGC, run by <laughs> former CVG people. So we are like really middle fingering it up to future publishing, being like, "Eat our asses." <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, hey that's all I got. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thank work. you. Yeah. Thank you, that's Lucy. Lovely. Thank you, 
everyone for watching. Make sure you archive your most precious memories, but maybe do it in a way that, you know, isn't on Facebook. Don't let Facebook be the place where you're archiving stuff because that shit is wild. Um, just maybe create a, you know, a little web page for yourself and maintain it. Stick it like in that. the archive. Yeah, archive thing. Um, and then... Stick uh, it. Just stick it in the archive. Stick it in the Pop it in there. fucking archive. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, that was dirty. Uh, put, it in my, put it in my archive, daddy. Uh, <laughs> no. Thank you for watching this episode of The Very Online Show. Jeff, where can people find you? At Jeff Bacalar and only there. Lucy, where can people find ar archives of your work? Uh, maybe on the internet archive, but Lucy James Games on everything. You can find me as Tomo H on Twitter and Twitch and pretty much everywhere else. And find my tweet that is now being saved on the Wayback Machine. <laughs> 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 See you next time, everyone. Bye. And the library. Can we, can we take a break right there, real quick? Just yes. two seconds. I uh, got to poop. Take care of something. Tommy Troubles. One, we'll see how fast we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> time me, time me. Standing on the edge of the toilet of the crater. <laughs> Having a big shit. Having a shit. <laughs>